Hello friends and enemies, my name is Rosa, and today we'll be reading Settlers, the Mythology of the White Proletariat from Mayflower to Modern by J. C. I I think that's how you pronounce his name, and I believe this is the newest edition of the book. Um, we'll be reading the f introduction and chapter one. Let's start. The Introduction Introduction. This is a quote from Karl Marx on the 1850 split in the German Communist League. The minority puts a dogmatic view in place of the critical and an idealist one in place of the materialist. They regard a mere discontent instead of real conditions as the driving wheel of revolution. Whereas we tell the workers you have to go through 15, 20, 50 years of civil wars and national struggles, not only in order to change conditions, but also to change yourselves and make yourselves capable of political rule. You, on the contrary, say we must come to power immediately, or else we may as well go to sleep. Whilst we make a special point of directing workers' attentions to the undeveloped state of the German proletariat, you falter the national feeling and the status prejudice of the German artisans in the crudest possible way, which admittedly is more popular. Just as the word people has been made holy by the Democrats, so the word proletariat has been made holy by you. Karl Marx on the 1850 split in the German Communist League. Uh, author's note. On the fall in the fall 1961, I found myself with other militant sit-in veterans in the reborn open chapter of Congress of Racial Equality picketing a major store which had refused to hire new Africans. Even in the Bay Area, that was the custom and law back then. It had started years earlier for me in high school, in LA's 1950s San Fernando Valley, where as lone, uneducated leftist, I had tried unsuccessfully to sell copies of the Socialist Labor Party newspaper, the only one I could get, every weekend to my classmates. At the same time, I was working as an Asian houseboy for the family of a Jewish used car dealer. Stereotypes abound for a reason. I was fired for taking a night off for my own high school graduation. The wife lost it and screamed, people like you don't need graduations. A month later, I was living in a different state to find a job and avoid the colored military draft, and active as the novice food drive coordinator in a long, bitter, ugly hospital worker strike, whose main public demand was pay raises up to the federal, federal minimum wage. We lost badly. I have been through a thousand campaigns and movement groups since then, and I can't believe I've been so dumb so often. In 1975, while mostly active doing African liberation movement, support with radical exiles from various countries, I started writing a historical investigation into the puzzling class politics of Euro-American workers, which I naively thought would only be a quick movement paper. Eight years later, what became retitled as Settlers was finished. Even then, I didn't believe there was any audience for it, and planned only to fold copy 50 copies of my tight draft for internal education in the underground Black Liberation Army Coordinating Committee. Comrades with more sense than myself insisted that we publish it as a book, if only for the liberation movement. Over the years, we took it through three editions, but finally it's time to hand it on to new publishers. Remember, only I wrote this with my life. And now we can get to the real introduction. Now, um, before I start again, I just need to make a clarification. Uh, by New African, he means uh, African American. Just to make that clear, it's um, old, like, black liberation terminology. Uh, there's also some peculiar spellings, like America is spelled with a K, so is Africa. Uh, uh, hopefully I'll get, like, a typed up stuff on the screen. Um, anyways, let's go on to the introduction. 
One day, a friend introduced me to a young new African brother who was selling things on the sidewalk outside a large office building. When our talk turned to this book, the young brother looked up, looked up proudly and said, I already know everything about the white man, and he knows nothing about me. As we were talking away, I couldn't help thinking how many people had the same thought. Because they know that the white man has, is completely racist and treacherous, they wrongly assume that they know all about his society. This is really the point that this ba book begins from. In fact, the 1960s breakthrough of ethnic studies program at universities has been dialectically turned around and used against us. We are, a, we are getting imperialist sponsored and imperialist financed Asian studies, black studies, Puerto Rican studies, Indian studies, ethnic studies pushed back down our throats. Some of the most prominent third world intellectuals in the U.S. empire are getting paid good salaries by the imperialists to teach us our histories. Why? U.S. imperialism would rather that all third world people in their empire remain totally blank and ignorant about themselves, their nations, their cultures, their pasts, about each other, about everything except going to work in the morning. But that day is over. So instead, they oppose enlightenment by giving in to it in form, but not in essence. Like jujitsu, our original demand that our separate and unique histories be uncovered and recognized is now being used to throw us off our ideological balance. The imperialists promote watered down and distorted versions of our pasts as oppressed third world nations and peoples. The imperialists even concede that their standard U.S. history is a white history and is supposedly incomplete unless the long suppressed third world histories are added to it. Why? The key to the puzzle is that their story, imperialist Euro-American mishistory, is not incomplete, it isn't true at all. Their story also includes the standard class analysis of America that is put forward into our hands by the Euro-American left. Their story keeps saying over and over, you folks just think about your own history, don't bother analyzing white society, just accept what we tell you about it. In other words, it's as if British liberals and socialists had told African anti-colonial revolutionaries in Ghana or Kenya to just study their own traditions, but not to study the British Empire. Their, their story is not incomplete at all, but it's a series of complete lies, an ideological worldview cleverly designed to further imperialist domination of the oppressed. This work throws the light of historical materialism on Babylon itself. For so long, the oppressed have been the objects of investigation by Euro-imperialist sociology, anthropology, psychology, etc., all to further pacifying and controlling us. Anthropology, for example, had its origins as an intelligence service for European colonization of the world. Now it is time to scientifically examine the oppressor society. The final point we must make is that this document, while it deals with aspects of our history within the U.S. Empire, is nothing like a history of Asians here, nor is it a history of Indian nations, the African nation, Astalan, or other third world nations or peoples. While we discuss third world struggles and movements, this is not a critical examination of these political developments. This is a reconnaissance into enemy territory.